Avoid American Airlines first class. Let me explain. Over the last few months, I've flown all the American full service carriers on board their business and first class offerings. Well, it's fair to say, it's been a mixed bag. Today, it's AA's turn. And on this occasion, I'll be flying one of their longest domestic flights at a combined total of over 12 hours, all the way over to the beautiful state of Hawaii. I'll be flying first class, costing today a cool $1,200, so naturally expectations are relatively high. I'm starting my journey in LA, but we'll need to fly inland first to catch this super long domestic flight. Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. You join me today in Los Angeles International Airport. I'm currently in the Admiral's Lounge, the American Airlines Business and First Class Lounge. So. With that said, let's go downstairs and go and catch our flight. My first flight today is on board AA's A321. Now, given the focus of this video is on the long haul segment, whilst we make our way over to Texas, let me explain the first issue I came across while booking these tickets. Right now I'm settled into my seat, I can relax a bit, as until a few hours ago, it wasn't clear I'd even make this flight. I booked my tickets just the day previous, and upon paying on AA.com, I never received a confirmation email and PNR. Bear in mind, full payment had been taken, but they never issued my ticket. It was only after spending four hours and plenty of Skype credit later, I managed to get my tickets issued. The excuse, an issue with their payment system. Computer says no. Had I pitched up to the airport without calling, I'd never have been let on board. Back to my Dallas flight, it's food time, or should I say plastic school lunchbox time. Quite what is going on here, I don't know, but this is what $300 gets you on a three hour first class flight. I spent the rest of the flight watching some Netflix, and before I knew it, we're coming into land into Texas. Frustratingly, the bags this evening took a good 45 minutes, and given I'm just laying over here, I'm keen to get over to my hotel for sleep. A short Uber ride later. Welcome. Welcome to Texas. Well, welcome to an airport hotel. Here, obviously just overnight, but if I'm honest with you, I wish I had a bit more time. I always wanted to see a bit of Texas, but I'm done. That said, guys, I'll catch you in the morning. Good night. The next day. Another early start later, and I'm hurtling towards DFW in the airport shuttle. Well, we're back at the airport again, my goodness. Good morning, guys. Um, I am really quite tired. Let's go check in for our flight. Um, there's several things that need to happen because it's not as simple as checking in for a flight to Hawaii at the minute. You've got a ton of documents that you need to substantiate. Right, all through TSA. It's actually pretty good today, to be fair. So good on them for once. Now I've got to go and locate the lounge because I've got lounge access again, which is good. But that is only down to the fact that I have status with BA. If I didn't, I wouldn't get lounge access flying first on an eight hour flight. It's quite frankly ridiculous, but that's just unfortunately the reality of traveling within the US in a premium cabin. I need to go and check where the gate is because that's the other thing. This looks like quite a big terminal. Let's have a look. It's reassuring to see, domestically at least, US air travel is at near pre-pandemic levels. Conversely, international travel, unfortunately, is still a very different story. Well, I think we've made it into the world's largest lift. I still find it staggering. It's not my $1,000 ticket letting me in here, but my British Airways status. Right. Let's talk the situation of going to Hawaii at the minute. How does it work? It's not quite as simple as just hopping on a plane. If you're going to fly into Honolulu, uh, you're supposed to fill out this uh, questionnaire here and that will give you a QR code. And that QR code will give you access into the island. It totally depends on what you filled out. Back to the lounge and to another frustration with AA. Everything is chargeable. In fact, one of the very few things I could get hold of for free was this avocado on toast, albeit this was sponsored by a credit card. <laughs> you can't make this up. Right then guys, let's go and head over to the gate. Uh, we are, I think, let's have a look, shall we? 
D27, so just over here. So the good thing, obviously, about being in that lounge is that it's right near to the gate that I need to go and catch my flight. We're on the 777 today, 777-200ER, uh, which has got their retrofitted, newer interior. Or does it? I sense an equipment swap. Right, time to get on board. That was actually a lot quicker than I thought it would be, although there was a surprisingly long queue for Group 1. Of course, it, you're also Group 1 if you're a, a frequent flyer as well, so hence why usually speaking in America, the queues are longer. Hello, Hello good. As we get on board, my suspicions turn out to be correct. We're on quite a different product to what I booked yesterday. Thankfully, all seats still offer direct aisle access, but it's not the super diamond product I'd hoped for. Let's get settled into my seat 2L. Thankfully, there's ample stowage space above the seats with both central and side overhead bins. The same cannot be said at the seat itself. Now, first thing you notice is that my seat faces backwards and unfortunately away from the window. Let's get my seatbelt on, sit back, and it's not long before we begin to push back. It feels strange we're departing for the longest domestic flight I've ever taken across half of the US and several thousand miles across the Pacific. To put this into perspective, it's the same distance as if I flew from London to New York or Barbados. As we taxi off the runway, our flight gets a water cannon salute, which, heartwarmingly, is done because it's the pilot's last flight. Love this tradition. We take off into the beautiful Texan morning, heading west, bound for paradise. The atmosphere on board is of a holiday one, and I can't help smile seeing everyone so happy, given the lockdowns and restrictions on everyone's lives over the last 18 months. A tablecloth is plonked down, odd size, don't you think? And I'm served a Diet Coke in a plastic cup. Covid measures apparently. The nut mix was tasty and went well with my DC. In seemingly no time at all, my meal arrived. Everything seemed to be going at a million miles an hour. Here's today's menu. Let me know what you would have gone for. I'd actually pre-ordered my main on this flight as they often run out. I went for the surf and turf, which consisted of quite dry beef and one prawn. There was a side of burrata and strawberry salsa, which was really good. Flavours I'd never thought go together. To finish, I went for, and it says on the menu, Belgium chocolate cheesecake, though it's more of a tort. Delicious, mind you. And almost as soon as I'd finished, my tray table was cleaned, and that was it in terms of service. Within an hour of takeoff, the FAs then retreated to the galley, reading books and on their phones. I'm aware that there are certain COVID measures, but for first class, it's the most hands-off approach I've experienced out of the over 50 flights I've taken in the last six months. Next up, it's time for the Lou review. I was impressed with these, clearly retrofitted, modern and clean. No amenities aside from the soap to speak of, unfortunately, but this is more than what, for example, Swiss First Class provides. Let's head back over to my seat and explore more of the features and get it made up into a bed. As you've seen, I've changed into my trackies. They don't offer pyjamas. I think Qatar is one of the very few airlines that, uh, and also Virgin Atlantic op uh, offer pyjamas in their business class. We do, however, have bedding today, which is uh, very reassuring. The seat folds into a flatbed at the touch of a button. It's great to see AA provide bedding, as some carriers such as Air Canada I found to use COVID as an excuse and not provide any. It is, however, on the narrow side, and there's a fatal flaw with the seat itself. As it's built into the seat behind, whenever the person behind you adjusts their seat or moves in and out, your seat moves. This means you're constantly being disturbed and makes sleeping uncomfortable. The other issue with this seat is there's literally no stowage, meaning you need to be super careful nothing valuable drops into the workings of the seat. I watched some TV for a couple of hours and the selection was great, though like the BA Club world, the TV folds out of the seat, meaning gate-to-gate -gate entertainment is not possible. I also pressed the call bell at this point, as I'd not had any refreshments in well over two hours. Sadly, this was unanswered. I managed to find an FA in the galley and asked them for a bottle of water, which was promptly provided. I then slept for a further few hours. Around an hour before landing, a light snack was served, half a beef wrap and some crisps. Well, potato chips to Yarl. I can't say it was hugely filling and for an eight hour flight, I'd have expected something more substantial. I did ask for a snack earlier on, but I was told I had to wait until this. Not very first class, eh? eh? Thankfully, the poor service left my mind completely as we began to descend over Hawaii. This has to be one of the very best landings I've ever experienced. Absolutely beautiful. 
In conclusion then, and why I can't wholeheartedly recommend AA First Class, is down to not only the service on board today, but coupled with the online experience prior to travel. In addition to the average food, the high cost of the ticket, equipment change, and poor quality lounge provision, I would 100% suggest flying on Hawaiian over AA to Honolulu. Hence my title, Avoid. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll catch you all again next week. <laughs>